Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 151. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we are here now for the uh, Class D Super Lap Days. Uh, we're going to be doing four events today. Uh, four championships, sorry. Uh, and we're starting off with Fujimi Kaido, Rally de Pos... Positano and then Nurburgring. Let's go. Dog. Woof. Woof. Nope, she's not paying attention. Cool. Fair enough. And we're off. The Quattro. <laughs> Meow. Silly doggy. <laughs> she loves sitting on the bed. And just chilling. Casey fucking hated that. Casey was like an ADHD dog. Just refused to sit still. <laughs> Been chilling, lads. I can go... With the flow. Do you believe it in your head? I fucking love this song. Good old Queens of Stone Age. At larger equals better. <laughs> that is brilliant. I want something good to die for. Will you believe it in your head? Ah, uh, come on. Nice. Matrix, what up? How are you today? Hopefully you're having a good day. This thing is very much a really enjoyable car to drive around here, actually. <laughs> Been all right today. Good to hear, man. Waterfall. Ah, shit. Hey, nice one. Not really paying too much attention to um, Project Paradise lately. Just because I haven't been playing it. I've been playing too much Steam Deck. So, there's a waterfall. There's a waterfall. <laughs> Fucking hardcore British accent. 
Let's go. I'm from Britain. I'm British. Yeah, I'm fucking British, lad. <laughs> do, 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 do. Also, this is our last stream till um, pretty much the end of the year. The shittest car in Forza's, in my opinion, which means it's correct. <laughs> One of the most terrible cars I've ever driven is the Aerial Atom. Like, it's horrendous to drive. That's also another terrible car as well. That's the, um... Is it a Radical? Or is that the, um, pickup thing? The buggy car. We fucking bloody British. Let me get some scrummy chips. Oh, you said crisps. Never mind. Oh, uh, the golf buggy looking ass car. Yeah, that's, um... That's a strange one. I never understood why they had buggies in motorsport when they didn't offer any off-road options. I think the one thing that will make the next Forza stand out is if they add rallying. Even if it's just rally cross for now. If they add like a rally cross mode to Forza with like rally cross tracks. Then maybe in like a future update they do rallying. At rally Crocs. <laughs> Gotta make sure they're in turbo mode. Am I right, bitches? Um Yeah. I'm playing a shit ton of the Steam Deck lately though, so uh going back to my original point. So I haven't really been paying attention much to like Test Drive Unlimited 2 in particular. Um, I just haven't got around to, like, doing all the patches and stuff like that to get, um, Steam Deck on the, the Test Drive Unlimited 2 on the Steam Deck. It's just, I, I've played so much Test Drive in my lifetime that I can't justify to play it again. No, Test Drive Unlimited 2. God, I have you... <laughs> Test Drive Unlimited 2. The one that came out in 2010. You know? The second Test Drive Unlimited game. Mm -hmm. I still can't believe they delayed Solar Crown by a year. That hurts. Uh, what price? Um, to be fair, I think it's going to be about 50 quid um, on Steam and maybe 60 on consoles. I don't think it's going to be up in the £70 mark that you're seeing with a lot of modern day titles. Um... Just because of the fact KT Racing isn't a AAA studio, they're not up in that realm yet. So, um, I think it's going to be a, a bit more expensive. Um, no, probably 65 euro. 60 euro. On PC, it's going to be 10, 10 pound cheaper, guaranteed. Table manners, fucking hell. Yeah. Definitely a good idea, but I really think game developers need to stop announcing games before they come out because the hype dies down. 
we're, we're in an era where people are playing a lot of different video games. Um, and especially, like, the people that play video games and that pay attention to a lot of these, especially, like, 18-plus video games, are people of an older age. Having a game that gets announced... But then there's all these other games that come out before it. It just brings the hype down for the game. And eventually, it's like, oh. Yeah, we've been talking about a third test drive for ages. It's just, ugh. Like, to be fair, I did that with WRC Generations. I was really excited for it. And then as soon as it started getting towards launch, I sort of was a little less excited for it than I was when I first heard it. Because it took so long for it to come out. Like, they announced it, and then six months later it came out. Yeah, going back to... Um... Point I was saying before. Like, games... Yeah, I mean... The thing is... A, a lot of the time, if... Developers... The, the thing is, a lot of pressures that developers suffer from... would be easily, like, reduced instantly if they announced the game a couple of months before they came out. I don't think a game should be announced six months, a year before it's due to release. Because that gives them a deadline as soon as it's announced. And if they have to delay, right, all of us are disappointed. Whether we're, we're accepting of it or not, like, some people will be like, oh, why the fuck are you delaying it? Some people will be like, oh, yeah, that's fine. But we're all disappointed, no matter what. Um, if, they, if they don't announce the game until it's gone gold, which is normally happens about a month before the game comes out, once a game goes gold, if they announce the game then, guess what? All the hype builds up for that game. You don't have to wait long for the game to come out. Hmm. Yeah. But the thing is, if you delay when you announce that game, if they need to... Like, if they only announce it when the game is ready, like a month before launch, then they can have those delays and no one knows. Because, you know, a, a game is not never confirmed until the developer confirms it. Like, we all know GTA 6 is going to happen, but we don't know until there's a leak or an announcement. And leaks are inevitable. That will happen at any point in development, no matter what. But if they wait... Yeah, and I mean, that's the problem. And a lot of the time... Um, yeah... It, it, I mean, communication is key in these these companies. Like, they they need to up their game with it. And the thing is, it a lot of people are like, will say, oh, yeah, but it's, it's not the developer's fault. It's the stakeholders. But it's the stakeholders that it will affect the most. Are you comfortable? <laughs> Yeah. But, I mean... Hmm, yeah. It, it can't happen due to humans being humans, but it can happen at the same time, because... Uh, the thing is, no matter what... The public backlash that a lot of companies get nowadays for delaying games. Like, delays are gonna happen. It, delays are gonna happen. Like, I, I'm not saying that games shouldn't be delayed, because they're gonna happen. But what they should do is only announce the game when they're ready. Because otherwise, you've got communities that are waiting, as well as stakeholders, and all these companies, and 
all these fans that get disappointed by games that are being constantly delayed, if they don't announce the game until the game is ready, it makes it, like, I, I can guarantee you there would be a bigger amount of sales because pe people who are excited about the game are more likely to buy the game, yes? Statistically correct. But at the same time, people who have been waiting so long for a game that are fed up of it, that have just lost the hype, don't buy that game. Like, it, from a business standpoint, it makes more sense for them to not do it, to not announce a game until it's ready. Um, Because it... At that point, nobody then goes and starts speculating, comparing, getting their hopes up too high. Because they will have announced and shown off what this game's going to be about from the get-go. I, I, I always think that the worst way to announce a game is through a cinematic trailer with no gameplay. Because... It's just like, oh wow, you've got this really beautiful video, and then when the gameplay gets shown, ah, looks shit. Halo Infinite's a great example of that. <laughs> like, there's so many, like, easy solutions. Obviously, like, when it comes to communication between developers and... Um, executives within a company, yeah, that's a problem that is very difficult to fix. But at the same time, there are some very easy fixes, like, you know, not announcing a game when it's not ready. Because as soon as you do that, you've got a target on your back. You've got a target and a deadline. And if you don't hit the tar the deadline, you're being shot. <laughs> like, it's, it, it could be an easy fix in the world of game development. And especially when it comes, like, all these game announcement shows, they're all extravagant and all that anyways. But we're getting so, like, before it used to just be things like E3. We had, like, two or three shows in a year and they announced everything. Now, we're at a point where we're already getting multiple shows in a year anyways. Like, what's so bad about them just announcing it on their YouTube pages and then getting it out there? Or have these, like, they have shows pretty much once every month now for game releases. Maybe every two months. Put them in the latest game release show. Then everyone sees all the releases and knows the games are coming out very soon. There's no ridiculous, stupid hype. Like, there are games that were announced two years ago that I've lost all hype for because they've taken so long. And there's been other games that have stolen that hype. It'd just be an easy way for game devs to actually, you know, keep the hype and get more sales. Very easy. You look at Need for Speed Unbound, the hype around Unbound, they announced that game two months before it came out, and the hype around that game was so much higher than any other Need for Speed uh, towards release date. The hype was so much better. They didn't even need to give content creators early access to the game before, like, the general public to be able to regain that hype closer to the release date because they did it correctly. They announced the game a couple of months before it was going to come out. There was already leaks of like gameplay well before anyone knew what Need the next Need for Speed was going to be. I think there was leaks about, what, a year into development? About a year and a half ago, I want to say. And there was leaks about the game. There was a video with the Porsches, and you saw how the cars were driving, and 
you saw parts of the map. It wasn't great, obviously, because it wasn't a finished game, but there were already leaks of the next Need for Speed game. But the hype properly picked up as soon as they announced that game. And because it was coming out so soon around the corner, that hype stayed very well. And I, I've, I always said, I, I think I brought this topic up about six months ago during uh, Motorsport 2, that developers should announce their games later because it will do better for them. Look at how Need for Speed Unbound has done. Because they are, like, I think there's different aspects of the game, yeah, sure. But the fact that the hype around the game has been as high as it is, I don't think it's been higher for Need for Speed for the past 10 years. To be perfectly honest. Just because... And I'd, I'd say 90% of it is because they announced it so much later. So the hype was there. Because again, content creators aren't going to sit and make speculation videos for two or three years. Unless they are literally crazy. So, you know, that time... That short period of time is very important for them to, you know, get the hype get the game out it's a very important aspect and Need for Speed Unbound did a great job of it so I think more game developers need to take that kind of practice and announce their game sooner to launch rather than later like by all means if there's a delay after they announce it because they found some like emergency situation that meant they literally had to delay the launch then yeah that's understandable but it would minimize all these useless delays like car x street has been delayed four times test drive limited solar crown has been de delayed twice um cyberpunk was delayed twice and then released when it wasn't ready if they had have kept that under wraps and only announced it when it was ready to come out. You know. I think we wouldn't have had the cyberpunk fiasco. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think the solution to releasing games... Like, I, I understand it's better to delay the game than to, um, what's it called? Release it buggy. A hundred percent. But the solution shouldn't be, oh, we've made our release date too early. Let's delay it and disappoint our communities. The response should be, let's not release a launch date until the game is ready and we know we can launch it on the date that we tell them we'll launch it on. That should be what companies are thinking of. I don't understand why companies don't think that. Because as soon as there are, there's a delay, there's always repercussions anyways. You look at games like Euro Truck Sim. Okay, is it, it's not a great example because they announce what DLCs are coming out like a year before they come out. But they don't announce a release date of their DLC until it's ready to go. Once it's ready to go, they put a post on it. There is a simple behind answer behind it. Money, yeah. But then, at the same time, money is the an not the answer behind it. Because surely by respecting the community and keeping that hype as high as possible, whilst also not delaying games would earn them more money so I, at the same time the reason in that money could be behind it sure because money is behind everything but at the same time it would get them more money so I don't know I always see these gaming companies, because I know these gaming companies aren't on our sides, no matter what. Microsoft isn't on our side, they're just there for the money. But at the same time, I thought gaming companies, if they were looking for as much money as possible, 
then wouldn't they, you know, try and get as much money as possible? Rather than do anything but get as much money as possible? I don't know, it seems backwards. That's how the virus attacks. They come at me with machine guns, like trying to fight off a gnat. Still chat. Fuck. I love this car. It's awesome. Chill. Definitely looking forward to uh, the next Falls again, that's for sure. Again, Falls of Motorsport, a great example, right? Has been announced three times. Like, had trailers and, like, gameplay trailers, announcement trailers, three times, but only got a release date on the third time. And that release date is not final. They had a sneaky clause, so they basically said in their June showcase that all of these games are going to be coming out within the next 12 months. But Forza was right at the end of those 12 months, and at the very end of the show said these games are all subject to delay. We could delay them beyond the 12 months. Forza very rarely over the past, like, 10 years, has released earlier than September. I very much doubt that we're going to have a... Did I say Need for Speed? I meant Forza. No oh, way, am I? We, ha we haven't had a Forza game before September for, like, 10 years. I think they'll still delay it till November, which would be a another... would be another delay. DA got that dopey sense to me. Yeah. But it is going to have been six years. It's been five years since Motorsport 5 came out. Motorsport 5? Mo Motorsport 7, sorry. I was thinking Horizon 5 as the latest game, and then I said Motorsport. But yeah, it's been... Five years since Motorsport 7 came out. So, I don't know. It's a very weird situation. Next year, they might um, delist Horizon 4. So, I'm going to keep my eye out. Make sure I keep my eye out for that game releasing before it does get delisted. Cause I'll need to buy it on Steam. Nice. This watermelon drink is fucking amazing. Awesome. Alright, there we go. That's that championship done. We're going to move on to the next one now. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.